<laughs> okay. America. All right. So uh, here's where we're at, folks. Please look at the previous tariff talks. Lady Ada, the timeline. Talk about what happened. What's happening? What's happening? What's going what's to happen? happen? <laughs> and then, and then here's the other thing. Yeah. People on the social media things are like, "Hey, I'm tired of these pundits and people talking about tariffs." Does anyone actually have a real tariff bill? We do it. It's over thirty thousand dollars. We're going to show it to you. I'm going to post it online later. It's right there. Look, 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 look. Um, but we're going to talk about all this and more. Yeah. What is going on in the world tariffs for manufacturing? Okay. So in America. So there's so first off, the de minimis I think ended. I I haven't. So to be honest, I don't buy things using the de minimis because we buy large quantities of things and they go through our broker DHL account. Um, one of the one of the downs. Well, the upside of using a, a brokered account is that our shipments come through and then we get the bill later, which means that we as we don't have to pay before we receive the shipment, which is good because we get stuff and we can put in stock. Bad news is we get the bill later, and so we're starting to get the big bills because you know this tariff went out and then there was like the back and forth and there was like reciprocal and then ex ex whatever discounts and then ex exceptions whatever um most of the goods that we purchased it, they had to have shipped afterwards to get hit with the tariff because if it was in transit it wasn't affected and so um we're starting to get we had a couple small bills that were hit with like 145%, you know, because the country of origin was China, but we were actually starting to get like the big bills. And um, a lot of these are things that we booked many, many months ago because, yeah. you know, you have to book them with the vendor. Um, I'm not going to say who this vendor is because I want to be agnostic. Yeah. Um, they are, ironically, the, it's a big bill. Um, it's it's many items. Some of them were ten percent because they were not made in the U.S. Obviously, it's coming to DHL. It's coming from other countries. Some of them were made in Europe. Some of the goods were made in China, and that some of the Chinese goods were hit with one hundred and seventy five percent tariffs. Um, and there's like nothing we can do about it because we we had already booked it. Um, some of them we might be able to, you know, protest and get it reconfigured as one of the exemption tariff codes because it's a computer accessory <laughs> a lot of our goods are computer accessory or electronic components but that's not a guarantee and we got the bill we have to pay the bill so we pay the <coughs> bill um because if we don't pay the bill no packages come through so you know what basically what i'm doing like for example you're like why isn't there a lot more new products um well, i didn't say that well, I'm saying that <laughs> because I actually spent a lot of the day adjusting okay, with, right. with the new product catalog team, um, adjusting prices. We got this bill and I'm like, okay, this is, your, you know, look, if it's 10% and I don't <clears> get to it immediately, it's like, it's a bit of a wash. It's not a big deal. But this bill is big enough that I actually had to go in and start changing prices. <coughs> the question mm -hmm. is, are people going to pay the new prices? And this is something you're going to see now because it's like, everyone's like, okay, you know, tariffs, Prices are going to go up, but they don't go up immediately, right? Because what happens is if something's in inventory, it's not tariffed yet because you'd already purchased it. And so you only start to do the price adjustments when you get new shipments of goods. And so like it's been a month, we're starting to get the shipments that put things back into stock that have been out of, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just four, four yeah, six some weeks vendors go have, by. Uh, stocked up on inventory. Uh, some had stuff in their houses. And we did, but like <clears> sometimes <throat> you look, you, some yeah. of the things we book months and months ago, you don't, you don't control. So it's, what's ironic is people are like, well, why don't you buy from an American company? Well, first <clears> off, this, this company is a single source. It can't, I can't get what they sell anywhere else. Second, they're not American uh, either. Uh, and so, you know, and I don't control them. I don't control where they make their goods. So it's kind of, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, do you want me to show the bill? Yeah, I can show the bill. Okay, so this is DHL. And by the way, all this is this is information anyone can look up. This is not, we, our address is it's public, guys, and you can look it up. It's, it's our business we, address, yeah. and that's Mary who works on our team. And, yeah. uh, you know, some of you have even met her on the shows. She's part of our purchasing team. So, um, so don't worry about that, because I know, you know, folks are going to say like, oh, you know, your, your thing, your, your information. So, believe me, I've locked anything that's identifying. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I just zoomed in on this. You know, this is what everyone wants to see. $36,000. I think the total 
I don't the have the invoice. Up, but import, I believe the invoice is about 150k. Okay, for 150k, it's 36. And so you're like, oh, that's not so <laughs> bad. But it's like, well, some items got 10 percent, and a few items got 175. So, yeah. and unfortunately, the 175 ones were also like the bulk of it. Well, here's so, a question: If this was how it was always going to be, would you sell this product? To to be <laughs> honest, I'm actually uh, no. I don't think anyone's going to buy it at this okay. same price, and I'm so, kind of stuck with it. <coughs> so, but, oh, well, I don't, I don't think we're anyone's stuck with anything. Yeah, because everything's going to be different for all of us. We are in this wily e. coyote, you know. Uh, it's about to fall. <laughs> the uh, well, I, the I wheels know. are coming I, off. It's, it's not part clear. of the economy soon, and yeah. we're going to find out what happens when stuff isn't around. There's going to be mission critical things. There's going to be things that maybe some of the stuff didn't matter, or maybe it does. And then for us, we saw spikes in our orders because everyone wanted Adafruit stuff before the prices went up. So we know there's demand. And the cheaper replacements really don't, that's not what people necessarily want, but the cheaper replacements for it would come from uh, Taobao or AliExpress, and that would be under the de minimis thing, and that's gone now too. Yeah. Lots of complications. And Like I said, this company is a single source. Yeah. They own the intellectual property on their product, yeah. Yeah. and you can't get and, anywhere else. But, and by the way, this is common for yeah. absolutely everything. And you know, I did a quick inventory of just things around businesses and homes and yeah. friends' houses. There's so many things that are tariffed and and uh, come from China, so we'll see. Uh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna show our work all along the way. Um, one of the neat things we're we're gonna be able to do, Lady has been doing quite a bit of data analysis and more. We'll be able to show here's how much is coming into Adafruit and here much here's how much tariffs we're paying. We're gonna display this publicly because you're doing a lot of public talks and stuff like that. It's just easier to show how much we're paying and say if you want to report the story, USA manufacturer. Components are made in China, but you do all sorts of things in the U.S., but there'll be some things that you can just never make in yeah. the USA. Maybe, maybe, maybe one day. It's just going to take decades, just like it did in China, to have like an entire city that makes crystals, you know, like Crystal City. You know, there's a lot of things that you, it, there's a lot of things you need to make something work, and it's not just like uh, yeah. factory. I mean, this vendor's obviously aware, you know, they, they also kind of got caught, you know, obviously this stuff was made, manufactured months and months ago, and they're they're definitely, you know, I talked to them, and I was like, hey, you know, can you can you move any of this stuff yeah. to not be made in China? And they're like, oh yeah, we totally like got slammed unexpectedly. Um, you know, they're going to try to um, move the factory and they, they might be able to do it, but it's also tough because they're stuck with inventory, right? Like everyone is, you know, in order to keep stuff in stock, you have to have months and months um, of inventory. I guess the other thing I should say is, so we're um, doing everything we can to document things by like out, by the hour as tariffs have changed. What are the rates? When did things come in? So we can, if something was charged wrong, we could say, hey, the tariff rate wasn't that during that time or like whatever. So... Um, one thing we're not going to do is we're not going to try to do any tricksy stuff. Like, let's try to get it to go through another country. Let's try yeah, to like I'm not going to do trans shipping or like so, market is Malaysian or Vietnamese yeah. or whatever. It's so not, it's not. I mean, we you know we are obviously going to try to find suppliers where the tariff impact is lower, but we're not going to do anything tricky because not only are we radically transparent, but we're probably going to have to show all of our work, tell the story, and I think there's going to be um, tariff audits down the road, just like there's sales tax audits. So we may as well do all the right stuff. Um, we'll see what others are doing. We're getting tons of emails from other vendors that are saying. Prices are all going up June 1st. That seems to be a date. We it's shall gonna, see. It's going to be like, you're going to start, like they hit in April, but again, if it was in transit and a lot of stuff is in transit over ocean or even air, it's like, yeah. it takes a while. And also like, they don't necessarily like yeah. stamp it like immediately that day. You're going to start, if if people are going, to, if people are not going to cancel the orders, they're going to keep the orders and that's going to pay tariffs. They're going to pass the tariff cost onto the yeah. um, mm -hmm. customer. You're going to see the prices start to inch up. And I'll tell you, this order contains stuff made in China. Yes, it was billed at 45, some 125. Once The highest one was 175 because it was 125 plus 25 plus 20 plus 7 plus 12. It, was, it somehow got tariffed like 15 times. But even the stuff that was not made in China, that was made in Italy, that was made in the UK that was made in Japan, that was made in um, Vietnam, Cambodia, whatever, yeah. Canada. No, maybe not Canada. Sorry, no, this order didn't contain Canadian goods. Um, all those got tariffed to 10%, and those prices went up by 10%. So we're 15 minutes into the show. We do like doing this segment. I'm going to say a couple more things. If we need to do another segment standalone as things change rapidly, we'll let you know where, when, how, 
send your questions, whatever. We're going to probably send this and a transcript uh, to a couple of reporters and folks that are having a uh, little more talk about stuff. But um, other things ahead. So obviously, it would be really hard to deliver a electronic subscription service four times a year at 60 bucks with free shipping. Oh yeah, that was Adabox. So we're going to continue to ship the uh, latest Adabox, Adabox 22. We're calling it Adabox Classic. And then we'll immediately work with everyone in the community, our teams, and say, what does this rigid object need to do to become a more flowy object? So you know, we're calling this effort Adabox Flow for now. And basically what we want you to be able to do as an Adabox subscriber is just know when an Adabox is ready, how much it is, because it's not going to be $60. It might be $75, might be lower, might be, might be more, might be a very special thing that's $100. Uh, what the shipping costs are, because we won't be able to do free shipping. Shipping has dramatically changed since we started Adabox, you know, almost 10 years ago. And then we also want to figure out how do we um, get it out to you on a basis that makes sense, because the world is uh, very spiky. So it won't be every quarter, but we want to also do smaller runs of smaller things too. Um, so if it works out, we'll be able to do multiple Ada boxes throughout the year, some big, some small. But you'll also be able to say, oh, I don't want this one, I want this one. We'll give you a little bit more of a clue. Um, I'm excited because we just have to be so scrappy, so creative, and we'll make it so it makes sense so pe people can't flood it and like, you know, hold and reserve these. We'll, we'll, we'll try our best. We could always change and iterate, but um, don't let a crisis go to waste, everybody. That is Tariff Talk. We'll see everybody beep, 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 next beep. week for this. I mean, I guess we'll make a theme song. Tariff Talk, it's time to talk about...